Hey guys and welcome to today's video which is all about creating this simple animation using SketchUp, Enscape and then Premiere Pro. This video is also sponsored by Skillshare but more on that later. For now, let's get into the video. So the first thing that you need to do is have a SketchUp model of your design and turn it into an isometric and parallel projection. And is it just me or does anyone else find it really funny when it switches to isometric? Anyway, I'm gonna save the scene and then I would rotate the building to its all four sides and then also take a screenshot and also turn it into isometric as I go so that each screenshot or each scene is isometric. Now because I want to show the full design first before it by digrades because this animation is all about how this structure can return back to the land open up Enscape and I like Enscape so much it's so quick and easy but the one thing that I hate about it is that you can't have both screens open at the same time so if you have double screens or a different setup at home this might look nicer but for me I have to split the screens and that works too. Now I leave my Enscape settings on the default because I like how it looks but you can very easily change its setting and customize it and make it how you like it. And then I'm just going to take a screenshot to each and every scene. It's quite strange that they would call it take a screenshot, but it, it is what it is. But it is so quick to render in Enscape. It's literally a matter of using even SketchUp materials and then opening up Enscape and taking a screenshot. So I definitely recommend it if you're in the beginner level of rendering and trying out this animation style. But of course, it doesn't have to be rendered for animations. You can even use black and white drawings, but I can do something like that in a future video. But for now, let's keep it rendered. So now the by gradient aspect was quite challenging because I did have a vision in my mind, but I could not get it to work in SketchUp. My SketchUp capabilities are still not where I want them to be, but that's fine. I had to animate what would go first before the building. So for example, the chairs and the sewing machines, it was a fashion workshop. So the chairs and the sewing machines would be removed used in somewhere else then it would be for example the storage and then the platforms and then the floor and so on so kind of think about it like that and then the walls I thought would be the last thing and how I imagined this by gradient aspect is that the overall structure would kind of just melt away because it's made from rammed earth so it would just appear cracked and it will just return to dust or sand so I basically made it as that it scales down every now and then and then the grass gets bigger and I also added some fallen ivy so that it would be overgrown with grass. This will look different for each and every project and it doesn't even have to be about pie degrading or that it returns back to the land. It could be even a concept animation but this is kind of just an easy way to do that in Enscape and SketchUp. And what's so great about having both screens open at the same time is then you can see how it actually renders in Enscape so you get a live feedback, you see how it works and you can then adjust the grass, make it the same texture or the color as the ivy. And I also push the ivy a little bit to the top even though it's not perfectly on the edge but that kind of blends it in with the roof even better and when you kind of zoom out it doesn't really show that much so i'm just gonna repeat those steps rendering every scene scaling the building down and overgrown with grass so kind of at the end it will just be maybe a plane of grass and it will just return back to the environment now before we get into Premiere Pro, I do want to mention our sponsor for the day which is Skillshare. I have mentioned them before but if you don't know, Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. They offer thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics including illustration, design, photography, video and more. Their classes are designed for real life so you can move your creative journey forward without putting your life on hold so you can learn and grow with short classes that fit your busy routine with most classes under 60 minutes the first class that i want to highlight is the animation station with neil patrick harris and when i say i have never clicked on a class this fast before i highly recommend you watch it it was so fun to watch it's going to be 
legend wait for it and i hope you're not lactose intolerant because the next word is dairy <laughs> the next class that i want to highlight is the animation for illustration by abby lawson who shares her technique in creating woven images that combine photoshop with simple steps in after effects to create a layered animation with a hand-drawn look they also have classes for premiere pro whichever software you want to use for the animation skillshare has a class skillshare is also incredibly affordable especially when you compare it to pricey in-person classes classes and workshops as the annual subscription is less than $10 a month. And as always, the first 1000 people to use the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership so that you can explore your creativity. And now let's get into Premiere Pro. So I know that Premiere Pro can be very intimidating to anyone who hasn't opened it yet. I know I was when I first started, but it's really simple if you kind of just do basic things and then kind of work your way to the top. So once you open a new project in Premiere Pro, keep the settings as they are. You can then import all of your images and any of your media. So for example, if you had any video scenes or music, and then you would just drag everything to the bottom and that will just create a sequence. And I like that I didn't change any of the naming from Enscape. So it kind of already automatically named it for me so that when I put it in the sequence, they're already in perfect sequence. But you can also check it if you want to make any adjustments and if you select everything right click and then you can go into speed and duration because automatically premiere pro will make every scene about five seconds and i wanted this to be a quick animation so i changed it to be quicker and then if you right click between the gaps you can then ripple delete and as you can see that's a very simple animation and you can export it as it is now what i'm also going to do is just press ctrl and d which applies the default transition in Premiere Pro which is dissolve you could change that in your settings but just leave it as dissolve for now because it really does come in handy and it really looks nice in videos select my sequence and then go to sequence settings and I'm gonna change that to 30 frame per second it just makes the animation or the video a lot smoother just keep everything as it is and don't play around with it so now I'm gonna also render my sequence if you look at the top of the sequence there's a yellow line that means that it's not rendered which makes your export in a bit slower it even makes your preview or when you play the video in Premiere Pro makes it slower so if you render it as you're working it kind of speeds up your process and it doesn't take that long if you do it all of the time make the ones where it by degrees a little bit faster and you can also add text and titles if you wanted to even add arrows it's literally if you think about it it's just like photoshop but just for video making and you can add text using the text tool as well but i like to keep things minimal and very simple for me so i'm just gonna remove that so now let's say that you wanted to zoom in and make these diagrams bigger what you could do is click on one of them and then go to effects control and if you go to scale you can make the image bigger which zooms it in and you don't have to do it for each and every animation because if you right click and copy you can then paste the attributes to all of the other media in your sequence and that applies it again you can then render your sequence just so that it plays smoother and now we're almost done all we have to do is just add music if you wanted and what's really nice is that if you aligned your media to the music so whenever there's a drop or there's a beat you you would then change your clip and that is pretty much it in premiere pro it's really that easy if you go into file and then export if you go to the top where it says format, H.264, this is kind of the quickest and lowest file size, but it's still high quality. You could also change it into a GIF, but with GIF you can export audio. So if you leave it as H.264 and leave the bitrate as high bitrate, makes it smoother, but if you want a lower file size and a faster export time, then you would do medium, which is what I always do to be honest. You could also render at maximum quality and then that's it really, press export.
and this is the final animation. Like I said, it's a really simple animation, but it's definitely a medium that we're not used to. Well, I'm used to now because I've been making videos for about three years, but I'm sure that some of you are a bit intimidated by this and you shouldn't be at all. Just give it a go. They always say that a picture tells a thousand words, but I think a video can tell the whole story. I hope you guys are doing well, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you have wonderful holidays to come. I'm Rasha Shiruru and I'll see you next time.